Health care childbirth costs. Welcome to Sound the Door. My name is Kenneth from your tour. We've been looking at health care, the industry, initially in our first segment from a macro perspective. Then we moved into health care, surgical costs, looking at the industry from a micro perspective. We continue that perspective as we move forward into health care childbirth costs. What we are looking at is the feasibility and, first and foremost, the reasonability of you as an individual retaining the power to do good by, in fact, choosing to maintain your wealth in your own possession instead of relinquishing that wealth over to a health coverage institution and, re and choosing to retain your power for your health care options by not relinquishing it to the federal government. Now, what is the reasonability of us being able to afford, though we earn an average wage of yearly wage of $34,000, being able to afford medical coverage in light of the situation we're in today and where it could be as more and more people began to take back the power unto themselves to do good. Because as we noted in healthcare, our first segment, it is those who are participating in the health coverage based uh, industries which are skyrocketing the costs of health care. So we're looking at health care from a reasonability perspective. Can we reasonably afford it without drastically diminishing the salaries and wages of those participating in the industry? All right. I'm not talking about profits, okay, because it's through corporatism um, which have jacked up the prices, including the corporatism of health coverage. I'm talking about wages and salaries and reasonable overhead. Is it reasonable for us to think that we could afford these services outside of health coverage? That's what we're looking at. And then, is it feasible to think that we could do it and start doing it today? Well, we have to understand, at least when it comes to health care and childbirth, that, you know, Jehovah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who created man, also created woman, and he created her to have children? It was his idea. Matter of fact, it's interesting to note that in the most poverty-stricken portions of this globe, at this very minute, the success rate in childbirthing is 90%. Think of it, that even in the most poverty-stricken areas, where the enemy of their souls, Satan himself, is stealing from them, is killing them, and is destroying them. Think of this, that where the other free will agents of this globe who haven't yielded to the lordship of Jesus Christ and partaken of his divine nature, who are purposely trying to destroy those people by preventing other individuals from doing good to them, all right, they are still having a 90% success rate in childbirth. That says something about our creator, all right? He is looking out for your best interests. Now, we understand that, listen, each one of us is going to die at some point. It's a scientific fact. You can put it in the laboratory of life. It's testable, repeatable, provable. We will all at some point die. But you know what? Our Creator has prepared for those who trust in the divine nature, who trust in Jesus Christ, shed blood for taking our penalty for sin, that he takes the death for each of us. He's got something good for us. We're going to the other side. But in the interim, we're stuck here, and we have a desire for childbirth, and it's okay. It's God-given. So how do we deal with it? Well, let's take a look. The total live births in the U.S. is about 4.2 million a year. So less than 1.5% one one of the U.S. population will experience a birth uh, in this year. And in fact, in 2003, U.S. hospitals, with regards to the cost, charge an average of about $15,500 for a C-section with complications. That was a complicated C-section. About $11,500 for a C-section with no complications, about $8,100 for a vaginal birth, and $6,200 for a vaginal birth with no complications. Now, in the U.S., there's approximately a 22% C-section rate, which means that approximately one in four, depending on how you round it, or one in five women are not able to give birth normally. But note this, this rate is estimated to be two times higher than it should be which means it would put you at about a 10% complication rate, a 90% success rate with no intervention. Tremendous. Now, I'm no PhD, but I did locate one, and here's what he found with regards to childbirth costs. The average cost for an uncomplicated home birth, 
which is, is something that you may want to consider that is feasible today uh, with a midwife is $2,391, all right? Knowing that naturally, even in the worst conditions, is a 90% success rate. Now, uh, in birth centers, which is another option altogether outside of hospitalization, average cost is about $5,318. And I've noticed that varies. It may vary depending on your location. Uh, it usually varies lower than this number quoted here. And in hospitals, hospitalization, the average cost for vaginal births, all right, is $8,456. That's the average. But is that something that we can afford outside of healthcare, realizing that the average family spends about $10,000 a year in coverage? The average individual spends about $4,700 a year. So we see that the average cost for vaginal birth, at least in this instance, is about almost twice as high as what you would be paying singularly as an individual and is about you know, $1,500 less than what a family would be paying. So it's higher than the cost that we're currently paying, but is it reasonable? Now, if you went to a birthing center, your, your cost to have a child comes in about what you would be paying pretty close to what you'd be paying as an individual anyway, and it's well below half the cost of what you'd be paying as a family. Now, let's consider this. I mean, let's take a look and go over a brief introduction of the potential attendees uh, if you chose to have hospitalization uh, when you gave birth, knowing that we're looking at this from a reasonability perspective. We just quoted the numbers of what the actual averages are, but are they reasonable? And that's how we're looking at it now. And then the feasibility is, are there other options until the cost comes down as it would as more and more people take back the power under themselves to do good by not participating in a health coverage based uh, solution. So here we are, a reasonability perspective. Here's what you need. Uh, you need a surgical team, typically uh, re requiring a doctor, midwife, or more commonly the OBGYN. Uh, they earn about $200,000 a year, typically to perform between 80 and 120 births per year at about 50 billable hours per week, coming out to about $85 per hour. Then there's a labor nurse. They earn about $50,000 per uh, year on average. Then there's the OB tech, earning about $40,000 per year. The nursery nurse, though, may go by other names, averaging about $50,000 per year. And the birth specialist, again, earning about, uh, on average, $50,000 per year, bringing the total average wage, hourly wage for the surgical team required for a hospitalization to about $45 per hour. Now, on a V-birth, uh, which is typically two days, so that means you're in the hospital two days, room and board being about $400 uh, inside a hospital, that's reasonable. So you're at about $800 for room and board. Of course, there's additional administration costs, that'd be about $200. You need patient care, so having access to two nurses 24-7 uh, for two days comes out to $300. Remember, nurses are earning an average of about $50,000 a year. And then there's a surgical team, as we mentioned. Now, they need to be standby even if you're having a V-birth because when you enter hospitalization, is that you have access to these teams. Uh, and thereby, this team standing by is going to cost. And an average uh, C-section runs about an hour from beginning to end. And they're earning $45 per hour. And there's five-member team you're going to add up $225 to have access to that surgical team. Then there's the OBGYN, who typically will spend throughout the whole birth process from, from day one to day deliver of about five hours of their time with you. At 85 an hour, that's $425. Then there's additional testings, which we throw in at 500 bucks. Remembering there's 4.2 million births uh, in the U.S. a year, live births. Um, so at $500 an individual, it comes up to quite an economy there. And then there's the equipment lease costs. Listen, a heart lung machine is 15 to 20 K. Uh, you can lease a Mercedes Benz $54,000 vehicle for $780. If each individual added up $250 for, uh, equipment lease costs times 4.2 million, that's a pretty big, uh, piece of pie for equipment. And then there's a the pharmaceuticals, which ends up being 10% of the total cost bringing a hospitalization from a reasonability perspective down to $2,970. Now think of that number in light that you can go to a birth center for $5,300 according to one individual, and you can have a midwife at home for $2,300 for an individual. Now we just broke it down 
And what it should be is about $3,000. Now, if it was a five-day C-section, the cost would be higher. It would come in at more like $5,665. You can see our numbers are right in what it should be with regards to a birthing center. All right? So we understand, looking at it from that perspective, that, uh, you know, it's very feasible and that, you know, a birthing center is another option. And one person was quoted as saying that they went to a birthing center uh, and it cost them $1,900. Part we want to get across is that not only is it reasonable to expect to pay lower costs for our health care, but it's feasible for you to pull out today and utilize other safe options in order to bring in your God-given right uh, of birthing a child. Lord bless you.